Hello, I'm Ron Smith, Sales Manager with Isolated Power Specialists. The National Fire Protection Association, commonly known as the NFPA, is an international nonprofit organization devoted to eliminating death, injury, property, and economic loss due to fire, electrical, and related hazards. The NFPA code that regulates isolated power systems and line isolation monitors is found in Chapter 10, entitled Electrical Equipment Guidelines. Let's begin with isolated power systems. NFPA 99 3.3.154 says the ground bus of the panel board or isolated power system panel supplying the patient care area. This is earth ground. All equipment receptacles reference to this point and new operating rooms must be within 0.1 ohm to this reference ground. This means the panel board that has the isolation transformer in it is grounded to earth ground. NFPA 99 3.3.90 says, primary and secondary windings are physically separated that inductively couples its ungrounded secondary winding to the grounded feeder system that energizes its primary windings. Simply put, located in the isolation transformer are the primary and secondary windings. The primary windings are not referenced to secondary windings. They don't touch each other. Nor are the secondary windings referenced to earth ground. So first, we need an isolation panel to be grounded to earth ground. The second condition is to ensure that the isolation transformers primary and secondary windings are separated from each other. The primary side shows the line and neutral connections, and this is true since the neutral is grounded to earth ground. However, on the secondary side, neither connection is grounded. Therefore, there is no neutral, so we can't call it line and neutral. We chose to refer to these connections as X1 and X2. Here our system is working fine, but little do we know that X2 has started leaking to ground. What's causing the leakage? What is the amperage of the leakage? Is the amount of leakage harmful to workers? To answer these questions, we need a test instrument. In the NFPA 99 codebook in section 6.3.2.9.3.2, talking about line isolation monitors, it says, the monitor shall be designed such that a green signal lamp conspicuously visible in the area where the line isolation monitor is utilized remains lighted when the system is adequately isolated from ground and an adjacent red signal lamp and an audible warning signal, remote if desired, shall be energized when the total hazard current consisting of possible resistive and capacitive leakage currents from either isolated conductor to ground reaches a threshold value of 5.0 milliamps under normal line voltage conditions. The line isolation monitor shall not alarm for a fault hazard current of less than 3.7 milliamps. This is the state-of-the-art line isolation monitor distributed by isolated power specialists. As the NFPA code stated, there is a green light when in the safe mode and a red light when an alarm accompanied by an audible alarm. On the Sentry 5, you will notice a digital readout in the middle of the monitor 
showing the amperage of 5.5 milliamps. A colorized bar graph shows the increase or decrease in association with the digital readout. Additionally, it has two buttons, the push to silence button to turn off the audible alarm, but it will not turn off the red alarm light, and a push to test button to initiate a self-test. There are four conditions under which the Sentry 5 will perform a self-test. One, when it is powered up. Two, if the Sentry 5 loses power, then regains it again, the Sentry 5 will see this as a power-up situation. Three, you can manually initiate a self-test by simply pressing the push to test button. And four, every 24 hours, Sentry 5 will initiate an internal self-test, but without the audible alarm. The Sentry 5 will perform several internal tests, including the required audible and visual test. Again, the audible test is excluded during the 24-hour self-test. The Sentry 5 line isolation monitor is set to alarm at 4.8 milliamps instead of the 5.0 milliamps to ensure that we're within code. Therefore, the line isolation monitor will simulate an internal load until the line isolation monitor reaches 4.8 milliamps. Let's watch the Sentry 5 respond to an increase in leakage. Now that we've looked at the isolated power system and the line isolation monitor, let's merge them. As you can see, the Sentry 5 line isolation monitor is monitoring both X1 and X2 to ground. And currently we have no alarmable leakage as indicated by the green safe light. Also by our digital readout of 2.5 milliamps and displayed in our colored bar graph. Now, our last point. What if the line isolation monitor is mounted in a room other than where the work is being performed? In that case, we need a remote enunciator, like this one. This is a single gain remote enunciator that has three criteria stipulated by the NFPA, the green light, the red light, and the audible alarm. However, isolated power specialists makes various types of remote enunciators. Single gang, panel mounted, double gang, panel mounted with digital display, double gang with digital display, and many others. I hope this video was helpful to you. On behalf of Isolated Power Specialists, I wish you good health and a good day.